this week, the Wednesday night, nothing. nothing. <laughs> we do have a special person preaching this week, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. He's a seminary graduate, and I know him quite well, <laughs> and he's going to preach for us at the Wednesday service. So, so if you're curious, show up. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're not, show up anyway. So it, it's, it's kind of, I, you know, speaking for myself anyway, I, I rather enjoy having that refresher in the middle of the week. Um, then another thing to mention is that on September 26th, we're going to do God's work, our hands. And we're going to use the community centers so that we don't have any issues with people who can climb stairs and whatever. I mean, it's open to everybody. And we want everyone to feel like they can be part of it. We'll have several different projects going to help people. And I was going to ask Susie to say something, but she's not here. So, um, anyway, so that's coming up September 26th, and there'll be a meal and everything. 
And then October 24th will be a game night, a family game night. Uh, after church. After church. Game afternoon after church with a meal. <laughs> so, anyway, so we've got lots of stuff coming up. Any uh, announcements that need to be made that. Oh, I didn't even see you standing there. <laughs> Sorry. Very sneaky. Uh, I wanted to uh, invite any of you who want to express your opinion after church on your way out. Um, some of you may have not known, but the carpet on the south steps blew up um, during one of our storms. And we had the carpeting business who laid carpet uh, from Shickley look at it, and they say it can't be reapplied. So we're looking at um, new carpets. So if you want to come in, uh, they, they have samples are there. Um, and I have eliminated some because they're uh, one, three, and five year limited warranty, and so I've only gone for the five year, and then I've kind of eliminated the ones that are extremely expensive. <laughs> and then uh, more, of the, more of what our estimate is uh, categories, and I have about three of them, and you can place your vote, and, I'll, and we'll take that into consideration. Kind of looking at some with a charcoal or black kind of uh, background in it, because uh, we, I think the sun would absorb more heat to melt any ice that gets on those southern steps more quickly. Um, but maybe you have a whole another idea and your input is invited and welcome. So, thank you. Thank you for working on that. <coughs> Anything else? All right, well, let's begin our worship then with the Forgiveness, confession and forgiveness found on page three. Please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are captive, captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved your neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is built on a rock, hymn 652.
is on page four. Please stand as you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The prayer of the day is found on the front of the answer, and we pray together. O oh God, God, our strength, without, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect, protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arise within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May be seated. First reading today is from Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. So now, Israel, give heed to the statuses and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, with, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discomfort to the peoples who, when they hear all these statuses, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God as near to it as the Lord, of our, Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statuses and ordinances? As just as this entire entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> today is Psalm Psalm 15. Repeat the refrain of the whole art. Lord, who may dwell in your tavern, ta tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their hearts. They do not slander with the tongue. They do, do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit up, upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected. But they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. Lord, may you dwell in your time. The second lesson is not printed. It comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. And these are the verses that are kind of the theme of this 150th anniversary. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God 
Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel. We begin with the gospel acclamation on page five. Alleluia, Lord, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders, and they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human traditions. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Now, I, if we had little ones here, I'd invite them up and just sort of talk with them a little bit about who the bishop is and why he's important. And of course, we have Bishop Moss is our bishop, and he's recorded this sermon for us. And a bishop is an administrator. He's also, you know, is in charge of his staff, and he's also like the pastor's pastor. And then Bishop Eaton is the, and there's 65 synods, and then Bishop Eaton is kind of the bishop over all the bishops. So. <laughs> It gets complex. But anyway, I was just going to mention that to them and also the importance of history and how fabulous our history is here. And we've got, I think, Arnie, you were part of the group that put that book together that's really fascinating and how it came about. And one little fact, I think we've mentioned this before that we found in there, was the, the man who originally got people together to talk about forming this congregation. I think Huber was his name. He wasn't, I don't believe he was a pastor, he was like a secretary for the... Traveling uh, secretary for the Senate, yeah. Traveling secretary for the Senate, thank you. And so he got you know, a group of people together here in this town, and they decided that um, they would start a, a congregation. And that was in 1888 or something, and the, the church was formed in 1892, I believe. But what was fascinating about this person was he left here and he did some other things, and he ended up at St. Paul's Lutheran in Richmond, Indiana. And guess where we came from? <laughs> is that, can you, can you put that together unless God is involved? We came from St. Paul's Lutheran Church and went to Richmond, Indiana, and of course transfer our membership here. So he I just had, think that's like a sign from God. You know? he, he actually was the first pastor of that church. <laughs> we didn't know him. We didn't know him. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I just thought that was fascinating Bishop Moss. 
take a little bit of setup. If you can't hear, you can always move forward. <laughs> Nobody's going to have a problem hearing. Mm -hmm. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And congratulations and happy birthday, Nebraska Synod, as we begin the commemoration of our 150th anniversary. It was September 1st, 1871, that a small group, fewer than a dozen, gathered to create the first entity ever known as the Nebraska Synod. Who would have known then that a century and a half later, that small, inauspicious group would grow to nearly 240 congregations and worshiping communities and nearly 90,000 members all over the state of Nebraska. Over the course of the coming year, we will celebrate, we will commemorate this anniversary by sharing stories and events and activities, and we encourage you to rediscover the story of your congregation as well. For what we tell is the story not only of our past, but of our present and of our future. That story stretches all the way back to God's people in Scripture. We heard from them in the lessons you heard just a few moments ago. The story lies in the book of Deuteronomy, where Moses is speaking to God's people, Israel, telling them just before they enter the Promised Land that they are to keep God's laws. They are to live according to God's word, not only so that they'll be blessed in the new Promised Land, not only so that their lives will be well-ordered in the new land, but so that others will see how this people lives and will say of them not only how wise and just their laws are, but how near to them their God must be. This was the story that God's people told, of a God near to them, of a God with them, always. And that story continued among Jesus and his disciples. In the Gospel lesson we heard, Jesus and his disciples are enjoying a meal when they're criticized by Pharisees and scribes. They notice that the disciples haven't washed their hands, and they're critical of them. I don't have any trouble imagining that happens. Jesus and his disciples were often on the move. They didn't always know where their next meal was coming from. Who knows how hungry they were when someone set food in front of them, and so they sat down and began to eat. Jesus pointed out that it wasn't a tradition that needed to be maintained. It was what came from the heart. The disciples may have been eating with unwashed hands, but that didn't mean they were eating with ungrateful hearts or that they weren't eating according, according to strengthen their bodies so that they might live out their faith. Jesus said, more important than the traditions of the elders are the core of faith. What comes from within, from the heart, is how one can see faith being lived out. This was the story that God's people told of faith more important than tradition. And later, when the new church began to be planted and took place all over the known world, Paul would write to a congregation like that at Ephesus, a congregation that, like many others, was made up of two very different groups of people, of Jewish and Gentile believers, who had come together to try to form a single congregation as Christians. They were very different people. They would never be the same. But Paul said they could nonetheless still be one, because Christ tore down the dividing wall between them. They could remain different so long as they stood together on their faith, built on the tradition of the apostles and the prophets, built on Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. So long as their foundation was united and they stood on it together, they didn't need to be the same. They could even celebrate their differences and be united in standing on their cornerstone, Christ. This is how we came with the theme of our commemoration this year, built on a rock. 
we know that our forebears built on the rock of Jesus Christ and their faith in him. This is the story that God's people told. And that story continued to be told through our forebears, the pioneers on the prairie. When they gathered in 1871 to begin the Nebraska Synod, that small group, fewer than a dozen people, represented gatherings and congregations of people all over the state. Those were people who, when they had first arrived, got busy building communities and almost immediately building gatherings of faith communities and congregations. They knew they had to live according to their faith in order to perceive themselves as blessed, in order to give order to their communities, and especially so that they could witness to one another and to others about this God who is so very near to them, always. When one reads of what those pioneers endured, locusts and droughts, prairie fires and tornadoes, floods and storms and winds, disease and more, one can see how very important it was that they gathered to proclaim a God who was near them, who was with them, even in the most difficult times, because only that faith let them endure. That faith in a God near them is the story our forebears told. And they told of stories like Jesus' story. When they gathered in their early faith communities, they didn't have buildings with lovely steeples filled with solid pews. They didn't even have pastors, let alone vestments and altars and organs. They gathered when and where they could, in dugouts and sod homes, in schoolhouse buildings and open pastures. They didn't always have a pastor. If they didn't, a layperson would preach. And if no one felt qualified to preach, they would read their Bible together. But come together they did, because what they were practicing came from their heart, their faith in Jesus Christ. They could look far different than they had before they left their homes in the East to settle in this new land. The traditions did not matter. It's what came from their heart. And that's what they witnessed to. I can only imagine what it must have looked like for those who came visiting from the settled East or those who immigrated from Europe and elsewhere to see how different and how plain the worship and gathering was among these prairie pioneers. They couldn't hold the traditions because they didn't have the wherewithal to have buildings with fine steeples and oak pews and so much more. But they did what they could, gathering with grateful hearts to celebrate the word of God and live according to it. This is the story that our forebears told. And though they spoke of different languages and practiced worship in different ways, those represented by that small group gathering in September of 1871 was nonetheless united in spite of all of their differences. Because they built on the apostles and the prophets, they stood on Jesus Christ as the cornerstone. That shared faith could unite them when so little else could. Today, we remain united because of that core faith in Christ. That was the story our forebears told. Today, we too tell the same story. Like the people of Deuteronomy about to enter the Promised Land, like our pioneer prairie forefathers who gathered in this new land, we too stand at the threshold of a frontier of a world new because of what pandemic has done to it. A year and a half ago, we were gathering as we always had when all of a sudden everything had to stop. We couldn't gather in person. We couldn't sing hymns. We couldn't share the peace. We couldn't have choirs. We had to go online to worship or gather or gather outdoors in fields. We had to keep our distance. Everything changed on a dime and much has not gone back to the way it was. And much, friends, won't. We have been forever changed by pandemic. We don't even know what this future frontier is going to look like, only that it will be different. But we will live into that future, living out our faith in the Word of God, so that we can witness to one another and encourage one another, and witness to the world and encourage the world about a God who is near us, who is with us always, this is the story we tell, 
This is the story we live. And it's a story of changing traditions, of changing practices, of being different than it was, of being open to new risks and experiments, just as Jesus and his disciples were different, just as our pioneer forebears were different. So we too will practice our faith in different ways, yet we will cling to the core of our faith, living from our hearts. This is the story we tell. This is the story we live. And as we live into that future, we will continue to be an ever different people. If one visited the 240 congregations of the Nebraska Synod, one would see great variety among them. Even within those congregations, many of us are very different from one another. Yet we are united by our confession of our faith in Christ. We stand on Him as our cornerstone. So our differences don't separate us. In fact, we can celebrate them because we're united in being built on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. At a time when our world is so sorely divided, this may be our most important witness, that we can sustain our differences and be united, standing firm on the rock, who is Jesus Christ. This is the story we tell. This is the story we live. And we tell and live this story not only for today, but for the future into which God is calling us knowing not what it looks like, confident only that God will be there to meet us as God has been for the last 150 years, for the last thousands of years, and more. Built on a rock, we live the story of God's faithful people, living according to God's word, celebrating new practices in spite of old traditions, standing firm on our faith in Jesus Christ. This is our story, friends. We live it together. May we do so for 150 years and more. And again, I would say, congratulations and happy birthday, Nebraska Synod. May you be ever blessed in your story, built on a rock. with the Apostles' Creed found on page 6. Please stand as you're able. We confess our faith together, and there is a cross over there who had wanted to turn to the cross for prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of intercession are found on the back of the celebrant. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the whole of creation, that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments, and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need. Support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. And Lord, we pray for those on our prayer list, for Rod and Irvin and Everett and Adam and Sarah and Grace, 
For Cami, for Pastor Sel, for Dean, for Emery, for Pastor Hewer, for Jan, for Pastor Race, and for Gardy. Lord, we also pray for the people of Afghanistan and Haiti who are suffering so much, Lord. And we pray for our homebound family and friends also, for Bert and Larry and Carolyn and Helen and Dolores and Don and Edna, Bob and Loretta. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially those who have begun a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Lord, and I also ask that you grant health to them all. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed who showed us how to honor God with our heart. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also with you. We share God's peace as we feel comfortable. together it's on page seven Jesus spread of life we, we have, have received, received from you more than we could ever ask for or expect as you have blessed us now strengthen us to love the world with as the love you have given us amen Lord remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray our, our Father who art in heaven how would be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is, O God, our health in ages past. 